it's time to take another look at the Kalashnikov Sicilian. Yes, this fascinating opening that's wowing people and terrifying players all over the chess world. So it's an open Sicilian. Black plays the pawn to e5, putting pressure on white straight away. And then after knight b5, you play d6. Now, coincidentally, my chessable course on the Kalashnikov Sicilian is on sale right now. Yeah, the Black Friday sale is still in operation. So do check it out. You can get my course at a huge discount. Now, I'd like to show you uh, a blitz game actually played with this opening, played in 2020 between Arjun Eragaisi, yeah, star of Indian chess, against Stelios Halkias, who's a Greek grandmaster. Now, someone said you should never analyze blitz games, but well, I think there's some fascinating strategy contained within this game, so it's definitely worth a look at. Now, Eragaisi plays c4, which a lot of players feel is the kind of principled way to play against the Kalashnikov because, you know, you really clamp down on this d5 square. Now, in my course, I recommend bishop e6 and then pushing the knight back and then playing with g6 to sort of aim at that d4 square. And I'm satisfied with that line. I think it's very interesting. But I want to show you an alternative which has been quite popular over, well, over the last couple of decades, actually. And that's bishop e7. So the knight gets pushed back. And this is one of the problems for white, that this knight need takes time to reroute into the center. And here, black plays a very controversial move. Pawn to f5, yeah, the good old Freddy attack. And you always have to be very careful when you make this move in the Kalashnikov because it can end up weakening black on this, well, not that diagonal, this diagonal. And it can, yeah, once you move the f-pawn, you have to watch out for your king. Nevertheless, it does open lines for black as well. So it's, it's an interesting one. So white exchanges. And plays bishop d3. I think that's a good move because exchanging the light square bishops will give white greater control over the d5 square. So that's why black just ducks back with bishop e6 to just keep a bit more control over d5. Castles for white, knight f6. The knight comes back to c2 and black castles. So you could say this is it's almost like the, the starting point of this variation. And it's been played by quite a lot of strong players with black. So, for example, Tamar Rajabov has played this quite a lot with black. I mean, he's one of the, the leading exponents of the Kalashnikov. Um, I mean, that, you know, is, is, a, is a mark of its, um, you know, its, its strength. It, it's certainly not a bad system for black. Here, Eragaisi plays bishop g5. So he's playing in a very straightforward way. He wants to knock out that knight, which will perhaps give greater control over the e4 and d5 squares. Queen d7 from uh, Halkius. So that allows this rook to join in. Knight e3. So that's a, a, the, a successful trip for the knight. It's coming back into the center. And it's looking at that d5 square. There is a slight problem when you move that knight from c2. Is that black actually has access to that d4 square. Rook a8. So this is a nice move. Queen d2. And we're about to see the reason for this rook move. Now it's on a decent square. I mean you can see that black's pieces are very harmoniously placed. But this move I really like. Bishop d8. In my course, I call this the bad bishop bounce. It's a lovely idea. Bishop comes out usually to b6, sometimes to a5. But once it's on that diagonal, then that's pretty tasty. Looking down at the king at f2, also the d4 square. Beautiful diagonal for the bishop. 
and it, it's it's nice that you know a lot of people feel well don't like that bishop when it's blocked in by the pawn but you can do something about it you can send it out to this diagonal rook d1 yeah that's a backward pawn so white puts the rook on d1 fair enough king h8 tidy move just stepping into the corner and king h1 white does the same remember this is a blitz game so you know often these kind of routine automatic moves are made they're not bad it's it's percentage chess basically and now we have the next move which is absolutely typical theme throughout the kalashnikov in so many different variations and in my course i call this the trojan horse you can see that once white plays c4, then yes, it gives some control over d5, but it also weakens that d4 square. And this is a source of counterplay for black so often in this variation. I mean, it's a beautiful outpost. Sometimes black even sacrifices a pawn, and that will just open lines, you know, these diagonals. Here it's not even not even a pawn sacrifice. White plays b3 to strengthen c4 pawn. And now bishop a5. So it hops out on a5. So that pin is a bit annoying. So white plays queen b2. And now the bishop comes back. Okay, so a little a little feint out to the side. Having pushed the queen out to the side, it comes back to this absolutely crucial diagonal and Aragaisi follows through with his strategy of exchanging off that knight on f6 to gain control over the d5 square now this is an interesting moment because I mean, normally one would wish to play rook takes f6 and I don't think that's bad actually um, well in principle I don't think it's bad but unfortunately here that actually loses material yeah, I mean, if one had time to swing to h6, it would be fine. Um, so it's not possible. But in any case, g takes f6 is probably what black wants to do anyway because it gives black control over the e4 square. So knight d5 hits the bishop, which comes back here. f4. And now it's really important that black prevents the pawn coming to f5. If white gets that in, white's got a beautiful clamp. So pawn to f5. So now we can see the advantage of playing that pawn forward. Well, recapturing with the pawn. It was forced anyway, but it's something that black wants to do just to keep control in the center with those, those pawns. But it's a very tense situation because if black releases the tension too early then white will get a beautiful hold there perhaps with the knight perhaps you know undermining the knight on d4 g3 so that's kind of a solid move and you can see that that queen on the same diagonal as the king doesn't look too nice so queen g7 is a very understandable move just to block out the queen and the queen now switches over to g2 okay now here's another absolutely typical theme for the kalashnikov the minority attack b5 it's really nice to break down those three pawns so that black would simply like to exchange here and that'll potentially undermine the knight on d5 and if white captures with the b pawn then perhaps black can use that open b file in any case splitting those pawns has got to be very healthy for black just weakens them and here Aragaisi takes on b5 i think he should just leave that pawn there and probably the the best option is just to recapture with the pawn. Even though the pawns are split, I think it keeps control in the middle. But he takes on b5. A takes b5 and plays a4. He wants to create an outside pass pawn, which he's done. 
but in this position, well, th there's a slight problem for white here. So time for you to have a think. How do you play here with black? I mean, it's a really tense situation. You can see that the knight is beautifully placed on d4. That bishop is on a great diagonal, supporting the knight. White has trumps as well. You know, that knight is pretty good. Um, white is solid enough in the middle. And that passed pawn might get somewhere in the end. Who knows? So what should black play here? Black to play. Cheers, folks. Time for some tea. Well, Halkias played bishop c5. Now, that's a solid move. So the bishop is protected, and perhaps he's looking to play the rook over here. But there is a much stronger move. Bishop d7 is a beautiful idea. And in a sense, this is another bad bishop bounce. Not that the bishop was bad on e6, but this is a beautiful redeployment. Hits the pawn, let's say a5. And now bishop c6. Now look at that bishop pair. What a beautiful switch from both pieces. And white's king is in desperate trouble here. The king can't escape to g1 because it's on the line of this bishop. Black is threatening to take here. There's pressure here, pressure here, pressure obviously on the diagonals as well. It would be a miracle if white survived this position. It's absolutely glorious. I love this switch. Well, the switch of both bishops. But it's a blitz game and... You know, when you see a position, when you see a piece that's well stationed, you don't think of switching it. You look to your other pieces. And black is still better here. A5. Bishop d7 is still a good move. But rook b8. A6. Okay, now this is starting to be dangerous. I mean, actually, here black plays rook b3, which isn't bad. There are other ways to play this position. E4 I like. And after bishop c4, knight f3. It's it's a wonderful piece, you know, with potential to play rook b2. If rook here, you can exchange, play queen d4. And black's pieces are just superb in this position. It's nice that that bishop controls the a7 square. That's obviously reinforced by the queen as well. Black is still better. But rook b3 played, bishop c4, Rook a3. Here, rook b1 is a good move. And that's actually quite dangerous now. But rook a1 played. I mean, this is still actually fine for black, even though this does look quite threatening. Um, in fact, bishop d7 round to c6 is still a good idea because those bishops actually control the pawn. But pawn takes pawn, and here is where things start to turn. Queen comes to a7. Well, it's a pretty good blocker. But somehow white is getting the initiative now. And I think, you know, particularly in a blitz game where you don't have time to sort of change the nature of the position, the side with momentum is usually looking good, and that's what happens here. Rook g8, queen b7, and once the queens come off, that's nasty with this beautiful passed pawn. And things have just gone wrong now. You know, there, there isn't an attack. Obviously, once the queens come off, then the passed pawn is extremely dangerous. Um, let's just go to the end of the game. Uh, knight takes, queen takes, and... Rook f1, guarding that pawn. Knight takes f4. Well, you can't take it because of mate. But a7. And the pawn goes through. And here, well, black resigned. It's a pity because I think, you know, black actually played very well. And there were, as I said, I think there were some really nice ideas. They're typical Kalashnikov ideas. The bad bishop bounce. 
the Trojan horse and that minority attack. Absolutely typical in so many different variations. But, I mean, regarding the opening, um, this variation with c4, this is, you know, I think bishop e7 and f5 is, is a very interesting variation. You know, you might like it as an alternative to my uh, recommendation in the course of g6. But it, it's a reminder that, that the Kalashnikov is a very flexible opening. And even though, you know, I, I have a, a set repertoire in the course, uh, what's great about the opening is because the pawn structure is basically fixed, if you think back to, you know, our basic structure here, that there's a commonality in strategy, um, even if you switch between variations, you know, you, you, can, you can get a, an idea of what you're supposed to be doing because the pawn structure is fixed and a fixed pawn structure that really determines strategy. So remember, my chessboard course is on sale for around about another 24 hours, I think. But but do check out Chessable. I'll put the links down there. Or if you prefer, you can always buy the book from uh, New in Chess. Lovely hardback and really nice design. People have praised the design and the content, I must say. I've had really nice feedback. Anyway, your choice. Thanks for watching.